And the anterior cruciate ligament is a stabilizing ligament of the knee. It's one of the most major stabilizing ligaments of the knee. Um, when it tears, in, es in essence, the knee starts to give way. Now, it doesn't give way on everybody. Um, it tends to give way on the more active individuals, the sporting individuals, people who, let's say, have a manual type of job. Um, and so that's a type of character on whom one would be looking to do an anterior cruciate or an ACL repair. Well, in essence, the first thing you will, you will want to do when somebody has got a torn ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, is to establish for sure the diagnosis is correct. Now, there are certain clinical features which are classic for the orthopedic surgeon. Um, it may lead onwards from there to, let's say, keyhole surgery, that's an arthroscopy. Um, but thereafter, you may be considering doing MRI scans. So all of these things will come together and they will form or help form the diagnosis of a torn ACL. That's then taken in conjunction with the clinical symptoms and away you go. Now there are basically two ways which you might like to repair an ACL. One's what we call intraarticular, that's doing something inside the knee joint, and the other is extraarticular, that's doing something outside the knee joint but which still stabilizes the knee itself. Now, in years gone by, the extra-articular, that's the operations outside the knee, the classic would have been a thing called the Macintosh repair. This was basically a means of using a tendon on the outside of the knee to stabilize the whole knee joint. It was then discovered, I think, that the Macintosh repair, good though it was, was perhaps not quite good enough, and so we all went, then went on to intra-articular repairs. And at that particular point, you can start using some sort of graft. The classic graft uh, was, and still is in many respects, um, the patella tendon, where you take a bit of the patella, a bit of the tibia, and the tendon in between the two, what's called a bone tendon bone graft, and that was used to substitute for the anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, you can then use other tendon tendons, such as the semitendinosus, and other tendons around the knee can be used to graft for the anterior cruciate ligament. Um, and then, of course, you can use artificial ligaments. Carbon fibre used to be used quite a lot, not used uh, anywhere near so much now. And so generally people will try to use intra-articular natural tissue from the patient if they can. Uh, there were times when one used uh, donated ligaments. Uh, these were tendons from uh, people who'd passed away and they would give their tendons just like their livers and kidneys and you would often put tendons um, from donors into patients in those days. But now we tend to use living tendons from living people if one can. Well, alternatives to surgery for the ACL, if you go back in time with the history of the anterior cruciate ligament, um, and that was even before I trained, um, uh, we were being taught to remove anterior cruciate ligaments. The anterior, anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, was irrelevant, we were told, um, and so it could be removed. In fact, that's not true. Um, it is a highly important ligament. Now, the first thing is to build up the, the muscle, muscle support around the knee. I mean, if you look at the design of the knee, um, it is actually, as far as I can see, designed to be in efficient. Um, uh, it relies very heavily on ligament strength, it re relies enormously on muscle strength. And so if you are down one ligament, i.e. the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, then you need something to take over. And so the muscles around the knee, particularly the quadriceps, um, uh, are probably the, the muscle bulk most important to knee stability. So as a very basic thing, you would probably be going along to your rehab center, to your physiotherapist, and saying, what do I do? And they will probably be building up your quadriceps, and you see where you go from there. Now, in addition to that, of course, you then have various braces. Uh, the classic was the derotation brace, um, which would go on the knee and, as it were, act almost like a muscle substitute. For example, the skier um, wants to do alpine skiing, um, hasn't gone through an ACL repair, needs some sort of support, quadriceps are a bit tired at the end of the day, a derotation brace would be ideal for that sort of individual. The, the recovery from ACL is, is very variable depending on how you have it done, where you have it done, and to some extent what a surgeon feels comfortable with. Uh, but generally I will say to a patient that from the day you have your operation done, it'll probably be four or five months before you're beginning to get quite happy with this knee. Now you, you will look absolutely fine to your friends and colleagues, but in terms of being able to kick the long ball, being, being able to take the penalty, being able to do an unexpected twist and turn, four or five months minimum. And if you then turn around and ask the patients a year later how you're doing, they'll say, look, look doc, yeah, I'm 100% improved, I'm much, much better, but actually even now I occasionally feel an odd grumble. Now that doesn't actually stop them playing the sport they want to play, but it does mean that uh, total perfection, a knee which is completely asymptomatic, will often take many, many months from, from surgery.